finally have an answer uh, as of April of 2024 on how to get your music to the new Apple Music Classical app. Now, if you don't know what that is, then just stay tuned. I'm going to tell you about it. You will also want to watch this video if you're thinking about distributing your music through CD Baby. This will kind of be a tutorial for that. And especially if you're a composer, Apple has started a specific app just for serious composers, putting you right up there with Beethoven and Mozart and Bach. And you can get on there, but you have to do it a certain way. And that's what this video is going to talk about. Some time ago, I decided to distribute a set of 25 classical piano pieces on my master score music brand and I wanted to get up to Spotify and I wanted to get up to Apple and YouTube and all the places but my main goal was to see if I could get these classical music tunes up to Apple Music classified as classical this is harder than you think and also into the new Apple classical app now, if you distribute through DistroKid, like I do, and you ever try to put classical music up there, you will see them tell you that Apple Music will not accept classical music. Other distributors say this too, including Amuse, and from what I find in research, Lander and TuneCore. More on all that later. So I started the album distribution process with this on December 29th, 2023, as part of my trying to get 100 songs up to distribution last year. It took a while, but finally the album posted and released after quite a bit of confusion and frustration. I'll go through all that, but I did succeed on getting the project on Apple Classical. So you don't have to wait to see if I did or not, but I wanna make sure that you know how I did it. It took a little patience, a little bit of research, an old friend, and a bit of good old fashioned music income. Science. Hello, my name is Eric Copeland and welcome to Make Music Income. I am a composer, arranger, and a producer and this is a channel about making the music you love and making music income, which in this case, I'm trying to do through distribution. We've talked quite a bit about streaming lately on this channel as of the time of making this video. We just talk with Song Trust, which is all about getting you more money from your distribution. We talked with Tom Dupree III about streaming marketing recently, and we did a video scientifically proving that sync licensing does drive music streaming. Science. 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 But we talk about lots of music things on this channel, and I'd like to invite you to a totally free place where we talk with like-minded people trying to find out how to better make music income and just do all the things like we're talking about today, music streaming. As a matter of fact, we call it streams. That's right. You can go to musicincomestreams.com and register for free, be part of the community, ask questions, hang out take polls, there's all sorts of stuff in there. And there's a new teaching element that's just about to get started. So make sure you go register at musicincomestreams.com. Join for free, come on in, the water is fine. Okay, let's now get going with today's video. This is not really gonna be a distro kid versus CD Baby video, but what I am going to attempt to do today is to show you the complete process of putting a classical album up to my old friend, CD Baby. I have been with CD Baby since 1999 or maybe before. Now, there are reasons I usually use DistroKid. And by the way, no one is sponsoring this video today except me. But I will get into some of the cool things and the not so cool things about using CD Baby, who really needs to change their name. But first, let's talk about why DistroKid was not going to work to put this particular album out, especially if I wanted to get into the Apple Music Classical app. Like I said, this is not a DistroKid versus CD Baby video, but I do usually use DistroKid to put all my music out. There's a lot of reasons for that, and we'll talk about some of those. Generally, I like the idea of putting my music to DistroKid for one price a year, and then getting 100% of what they collect, I have a lot of brands, and so I need some place that I can pay one price per year and put everything out 
and then they have a lot of nice little things that I like that they provide as far as marketing your songs. I literally put out almost 100 songs last year, and I intend to put way more than that out this year. But that would have cost so much with CD Baby. I can't afford to do that with all my brands. After paying $9.99 for a single or album, CD Baby still takes 9% of what they collect forever. So yeah, it's only a $9.99 upfront fee, but with every sale, you lose almost 10%. So again, the comparison is for another video. But suffice to say, I have done the math, and for me, someone who wants to put out 100 plus songs to distribution every year, it's not even close. DistroKid wins. Now the caveat to this is if you are releasing only one album per year or one single every now and then, then maybe CD Baby is a better choice. I use CD Baby for most of my clients because they just don't release music that much. I can share the math with you if that's something you're interested to see. Science. 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 Just let me know in the comments. But all this is still not the reason that I chose CD Baby to release this album. I'm not sure why, but DistroKid still does not distribute classical music to Apple Music or iTunes. And of course, also they don't distribute it to the Apple Classical app. Like I said earlier, the same goes for a few other distributors like Muse, Lander, and TuneCore. I also tried SongTrader as I had distributed my constant piano sonata there and that was a few years back and it got distributed into Apple as a classical piece and into the Apple Classical app. But when I tried it this time, it just showed up as pop for some reason. So I thought that was gonna be the answer for this video, but it's not. DistroKid has a page about this that you can see here and why they don't distribute classical music. Amuse also has a page about it. Here's what TuneCore says about it. It seems that the issue is more about how composers and movements and uh, all the different lingo that you have to add in for classical pieces is entered. In fact, CD Baby has this page on how do I correctly enter composers for a classical album. And I had to look at this several times because the songs I was putting up were actually songs that were from Mozart and were from Beethoven and were from Chopin. So I had to watch this page very carefully. I had to do quite a few changes and went through what seems like endless modifications to the titles to try to get through the uploading and distribution process at CD Baby, at least for this album, which had lots of movements and it had many different sonatas by different composers. So there was all sorts of title issues that I wanted to get straight. My goal was that this album would get out to distributors, but then see if Apple Music and Apple Classical would take it and take it as a classical album. All right, so let's talk about this mystical Apple Music Classical app I keep talking about. If you don't know what Apple Classical is, it's an app that looks like this that focuses only on classical music. Now, why the need for a separate app? I'm still not quite sure. I don't think anyone really knows why. I know that Apple bought another app that was a classical music only app, and then they turned it into their app. But since I compose and produce a lot of classical music, I had to make sure I had the process down and the right distributor that was gonna make sure that I would get into that classical classification. So now's the part where I kind of talk about how to upload your song or album to CD Baby and what you can expect to see screen by screen. So I thought I would just go ahead and do a little CD Baby tutorial in this video and just show you the pages that you're gonna have to fill out and what to fill out on each page. So if you've never used CD Baby before, you can use this video as a guide on how to upload there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go to albums and singles and say add a new title. I'm going to pick between a single and an album and let's, for this sake, let's say I chose an album. This is one of those things where you're probably looking at this going, you mean it's $9.99 to release a single or release an album? Why wouldn't I release an album? And there's probably reasons why you wouldn't release each one. I have no idea why they decided on a one fee for both, but they did. Now, I was distributing 25 songs, so I feel like this is a pretty good deal for $9.99. So I chose album. So first we enter the al basic album information. I probably should have put yes for compilation album on this since it kind of was a compilation, but I didn't. 
Maybe that's one reason why it was held up a little bit. I don't know. Album language, you'll put your language in there. This was instrumental, so it really didn't matter what language it was. Master Score Music is the brand I used for this particular album. And the album was called Solo Piano Classical Works Volume 1. And as you can see, I chose a release date for February 2nd. It took a little longer than the 2nd. We'll get to that in a minute. Positive Spin Songs was the record label I put in. You can put in anything. If you don't put in anything, they'll just fill your name in. And then the copyright owner, same thing. If you don't put anything in, they will just put the artist name. And then down here, they will ask you if you have a barcode, because I don't think I had a barcode for this album already. And you hit Save and Continue, and you go to the next page. Next page is Genres. They're going to ask you where this comes from. And this is a very important part for this particular album because I had to choose very carefully here. And this is really, I believe, the key for any distributor who is going to get you into classical music. They better have something like this. And I think Symphonic has something like this, but if you have main categories of classical and then subcategories where you can put other types of classical things, I put piano solo, and then I also put classical sonatas because there were a lot of sonatas. I probably could have put other things. I'm not sure. I think it just classified it as classical. We'll have to look at the app here in a minute and see. And then mood style featuring piano. Um, I put where my location was. And then I said famous artists I sound like. Well, definitely all three of these artists were on the album. So uh, Chopin, Beethoven, Mozart. You can put pop artists in there if you're putting pop music up or jazz artists, whatever your style is, whatever artist you sound like you can put in there. Um, I did the number of value, volumes, which was one. I did the number of tracks, which was 25. As you can see down here, I put all the names in. Now, at first what I did with this was put all the composer names in the front of each of these songs. I think I could have left it there. But it seemed like it was having trouble with that. And so I took all the composer names out, which is kind of weird. And at first made it hard to read. We'll talk about that when we get down the road. But here are all the titles I put in. And then at the end, and as you can see, I had to be very careful with the opus numbers and all these kind of things. And so I was being very careful to be very classically since this was a classic album. And then once you put all your titles in, you move on to the next page. And then here is where you're going to get into putting the information for each song. Now, this took a while since this was 25 songs. And um, in CD Baby, you will click here and that will ask you for basic information, track information. Now you're going to go into each track's information. You're going to put the artist name, which will pretty much already be set. Parental advisory, if you have that, you have to put that on here. Uh, what language, or if it's instrumental, these were all instrumental. Is this track a live version? No, I've, I'm never, I don't think I've ever done a live album on here. And then what kind of composition type were, this, were these songs original compositions? Cover songs, and that's a whole thing you'll get into with them on cover songs. We're not going to cover that, <laughs> this video. Public domain, which is what all of these were. These were all old 200-year-old songs, so, so all public domain songs here. But I still had to list the particular composers, even if it's public domain. So what they will have you do is uh, list traditional music. And uh, for this case, though, they wanted um, the actual composers. And so I didn't use traditional music, which is a lot of times what you will use, traditional and music, as the composer. But instead, what I did was say Beethoven. He did the music. And then he, does he have a publisher? Yes. You have to put, for public domain, you have to put, yes, they have a publisher, and then you have to put public domain as the publisher. So you have to do that for every track in CD Baby. I mean, you have to do this for every track in any distributor. Then you move on to the next track. And once you're done with all the tracks, you can just cancel out of this, and you can see that you've done everything. You get the check marks. Then you're ready to move on to the next page. And this is where you can put your ISRC codes in or... Um, they will just they will make them for you now I already had my own ISRC codes these are codes that are the recording code and so these are useful in many many things that you're going to do with things like content ID and with just general publishing you're going to want to have these ISRC codes but you can generate your own if you have your own um, ISRC code that's again another video if you don't they will give you 
ISRC codes, and they will be your valid ISRC codes from now on. We save and continue, go to the next page, and here's where we get into some of their distribution options. Um, first of all, I always just click do it all, even anything that's unpaid. I just want the music out there, and so I do it all. And for this particular album, I was doing, I was focusing on Apple, but I went ahead and did everything here. There's another process I'll talk about later where I may not do that that way. But I chose everything, all do it all. You can choose three different things here. Downloads plus streaming services, which is streaming services plus download services like iTunes. I'm not sure I know many other download services other than iTunes. Downloads only if you just want to just have downloads and that won't include any services like Spotify. I'm not sure why you do that. Or do it all even unpaid, which is what I do. And you hit save and continue. And you go to the partner artist IDs, which means this is where they want to see if you are already on Spotify, Apple, or YouTube Music. And you can look up your partner profiles here. If you've never put any music out ever before, I'll just read what they say here. Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube Music assign a unique ID to each artist name. This ID allows each platform to group the artist releases together on the correct artist profile. So when you release a song and then you release another song and release another song and another album and another album, it always goes to the same place, which is what you want. If your music is being distributed to any of these partner sites for the first time, then select create new artist profile. We can't do that here because I already have one. If you already have music on one of these partner sites, then the artist profile ID should already exist for that partner site. So you will see that I already had mine. Um, I've released quite a bit under Master Score Music already through other distributors even, not through here. And it will say, hey, we found this. And you can go and check it out and make sure that is you. You can check out these links and make sure that's where all your music is. You want to make sure you carefully do that because this is nothing to mess around with. Or you'll have separate Spotify profiles for the same artist, which I have on one, which is really annoying. So once you get all of this in, you can continue and then it'll ask you if anything is uh, extended 10 minutes or longer. And I said no. And then it's going to ask you if you want to prioritize what the clip is. Like if you want to say, I want the first 60 seconds or if you want to go in and customize the clips. Again, I can't do that because this album's already on. But you can go in and say, yes, play this 60 seconds here or just play the first 60 seconds. I usually just do the first 60 seconds. And so that's what I did in this album. Then save and continue. The next one you're gonna to come to is territory restrictions. I just use all territories. The next page you're gonna to come to is social video monetization. Now, here's something that we talk about on this channel all the time, which is um, different kinds of collection of income. And this one is talking about Collect YouTube money, earn revenue from your music on YouTube, and you can learn all about their social media, their social video monetization here, as far as content ID and all that kind of stuff. But, but, and this is a big but, you know that I really advise against having these kind of services collect your content ID for you. And here's why. I don't believe that they put the same amount of work that a company that only focuses on content ID will put into it. So I am going to continue to suggest that you use content ID service like Identify, like an ad rev, like someplace that just focuses on that content ID collection rather than these Johnny catch-all sites that are going to distribute your music and offer all these services and do all a thousand things they can't possibly be working as hard on content ID as a content ID service, especially if they have hundreds of thousands of artists on their site. So I, I, just, I just suggest that you opt out of all this. Do not collect additional revenue. You'll do that on your own when you put it into content ID. And all these songs are already in content ID. So I, I put them in myself. So I do not need any of this stuff. Content ID, identify collects from YouTube and from Facebook and Instagram. So I don't need any of this. So I will save and continue after hitting don't collect. Then next up, they have something called CD Boost. This used to be a publishing royalty collection like 
Song Trust. If you listen to our Song Trust video, we talked about this where CD Baby used to use Song Trust to collect uh, different mechanical performance royalties, licensing royalties, and things like that. Since I am with the MLC already myself, directly with them, I don't need them to come through here. I already have my PRO set up. I'm already with Sound Exchange. There is no reason for me to join any of the CD Baby and pay an extra 40 bucks to be part of this. So I opted out of this and I suggest you do too. And sign up yourself with the MLC and with Sound Exchange. And again, I'm not gonna get involved with any sync licensing program that's gonna possibly mess up possibilities for me down the road. So I said no to CD Baby's non-exclusive sync licensing program as well. I would rather do that work myself and focus on sync. Now maybe you don't wanna join all these these places and you don't want to join song trust and you just want cd baby to do it all for you just remember you get locked into these things and so it's up to you if you want to choose these i did not choose any of these all right so we're coming down to the end here the next thing we do is submit the artwork um, a few things to note here they like 3000 by 3000 pixels why i have no idea they will take a minimum of 14 by 1400 which i think is fine because we're talking about pictures that are going to show up this big like a postage stamp why they need to be 3000 by 3000 and at 300 dpi i think you could be 14 by 14 at 72 dpi and be fine obviously that's their minimum i don't think that's going to hurt you because nothing is going to be printed here and 300 dpi is for printing not for screen use, which is all that this is going to go to is screens. Um, they say PNG file type. I usually use JPEG. Uh, keep your files less than 25. RGB color scheme, not CMYK. That probably means nothing to you, but those are print terms. Again, it's not going to be printed. If it's not CMYK, if we're not worried about printing, then why the heck do we care about 300 DPI? Sorry for that rant there. And then double check that text on your artwork is identical to the metadata. In other words, make sure that your, your name of your song is identical to the name of the song on here and the artist name is identical to the song here on here. By the way, you cannot put anything on the image other than a title of the album or the title of the single and your artist name. You can't put um, website URLs, you can't put pricing information, you can't put barcodes. You got to make sure you're not putting copyrighted images on there, you know, scans. They really don't want, they really want good art. And so uh, my art was received. You can't see it here, but um, I put it in there and it's now in. And then you go to the next page and this is where you upload the audio, which I had to upload 25 audios. Now, here's something to remember. CD Baby is one of the last companies apparently that's going to take high-res files because they only take stereo 44.1 16-bit files i know every other distributor i've worked with is taking 2448 files which is pretty much the industry standard as far as high-res that means you're not going to get high-res companies calling on you to put you in the high-res bucket if you want to. They accept either wave or FLAC format. I would suggest wave and stereo 4416. That's what they want. So that's what I did and it was all uploaded and processed. And when you finish all of that, you will come to this title overview screen and you will be done and you'll have all these things here. Here's my cover. You'll see all the things that we picked, the UPC number, the genre, the secondary genre, um, all these things will be here. And then on this side, and you can even go back and look at all your tracks and all your information here. You could look at your distribution choices. You can look at your social video monetization choices, all this. You'll have to sign their service agreement, which they will show you. And you'll have to go in and sign this and say okay to this. And once you do, um, you can come back here. It won't say submission complete. It'll say uh, ready to submit. There'll be a button here. And once you have done all these things, you'll have to go pay. And the paying procedure is pretty straightforward. Uh, they do have something called here now, which we'll talk about in a minute, that will be between you and the payment page, the cart, because they want you to sign up for this here now thing. But that's pretty much the process. Once you have done that, then you have to wait. And that's what we need to get into next 
about my weights. Quickly, I do want to talk about here now before we move forward. And this is a service they provide. As you can see, it costs $2.95 per month or $24 per year per release. Now, to me, this is pretty pricey. And I believe I'm using this right now, but I think at the end of this month, I have canceled it for the next month. This is a great thing. It's a very cool thing. And, and it's, it's very pretty, obviously. Look how pretty that is. Um, and you can go and listen to any of the tracks. You can go to any of these stores and buy. This is something great to put on your Facebook page or, any other, or LinkedIn or any other place where you can put links. And this will come up and be a nice, beautiful page for the album or for your single. The problem is you have to keep paying for this on a monthly basis or a yearly basis to have it. But DistroKid offers you something for free, which is something that I think works quite well. It's also kind of a landing page for your album, and it's called Hyperfollow. And for instance, here is my latest album and what that one looks like. If I just call it up, you can see it's it's not quite as pretty because it's got it's it's more of a black interface, but um, you can do some customizing to this. I don't think you can really customize the color or anything, but this is what it looks like. And you can have the have it play right here. You can put all your things you want people to go to. You can even put your own links in, like a link. To, I have a link here to the sheet music. In this one, I have not only audio they can listen to, but they can go watch the YouTube video. They can watch it from right here. They don't even have to go to YouTube. It just starts the YouTube video and then has all these things here. So here's the thing about this hyperfollow thing that DistroKid offers. It's free. There's no paying for this. It's part of the yearly fee that you pay and you get this for every album. And really, when you're talking about something that's going to work on a phone, this is probably going to work a little better. And uh, not that the Here Now app doesn't work on the phone, but uh, when you look at them both on a phone, they're going to be about the same. So this works well. The Here Now works well. Here's about how it's going to look on a phone, which is still nice. Um, but I don't know if I want to pay $3 a month or $24 a year for that versus this. If I'm looking on a phone, I'm just as fine to have this as that, especially if it's for free. So yeah, I wish there was a little bit more color uh, things you could do here on customizing these, but I don't think there is. You can edit it, but I don't really think there's a way to edit colors or anything on the hyperfollow page. But anyway, that is one of those things that you get for free with DistroKid and here now you have to pay for. It's very pretty and people like it and some people feel like it's worth paying for. You can make that decision yourself. Okay, so at this part in the script, I had been waiting uh, for quite a while. Remember, I had started the process for this album on December 29, 2023. And by the time that I was writing this part of the script, it was February 6th, and it was supposed to be out on February 2nd. And I was still waiting to get out of CD Baby's inspection queue, which is where they put you when they're trying to listen through. Now, I don't remember such a long ingestion period before with CD Baby. I mean, I've been using this service since the 90s, and this classical album has taken the longest to get out. Now, it was 25 classical music songs that they had to go through and check and clear. So maybe that plus the unique text of each song, uh, all that kind of stuff, It maybe it took a while. Also, looking back, and I did not pick compilation rather than regular albums, so that might have been something. Anyway, it took a while, like weeks, to get it going out. It just kept on getting kicked out of the inspection queue and telling me there were problems. Now, this is not usually normal with CD Baby. At one point, I went in and the monetization option was not checked, which I didn't want anyway. And so I continued to try and clean it up. And meanwhile, at John Eric Copeland Music, in comparison to this whole process from December 29th of 2023 to February 6th of 2024, with still no album out, I put out a four-movement work of mine onto DistroKid, on Tuesday, January 29th, 2024. And it came out that same Friday to every place, except for Apple, because I wanted to send it out to Apple a different way to make sure, again, that I got that also into Apple Classical, but I was kind of waiting to see what happened with this album. I decided to try to use another distributor just for 
Apple and Apple Classical. And like I said earlier, I tried Song Trader. That didn't work. But it did end up correctly going out through Apple and through Apple Classical. And it didn't take as much time. But I was still waiting for CD Baby to get this classical music out and get it out right. Okay, so the reason I used CD Baby for this big 25 song classical composer album was that I wanted to get it out under the classical genre. It was really a test for my own classical music and get it into this Apple classical music app, making sure it was being classified as classical music because obviously this app only wants classical music and I want it to be there. Now, why do I want to be there so badly? Well, here's why. Next to Spotify, Apple Music is the biggest name in distribution. Some people, there are many of you now probably watching that prefer Apple to Spotify as far as listening to your music. When one of the biggest names in media where all of our phones and devices are Apple or a lot of them are, and they come out with a specific app to listen to classical music, well, if you're a classical composer, you want to be in that app. You want your music to be there. You want your name to be there next to Bach and Mozart and Beethoven. It's the same as wanting to be on Spotify and have your music up next to Taylor Swift or Jay-Z or Bruno Mars. You're proud of your name. You're proud of being able to be in the same space as these things. And classical music is no different. Classical is a proud genre. And yes, classical people are weirdos, but all music people are weirdos. And this may turn out to be the way that classical composers are separated with other artists. Talk about trying to separate yourself from AI and all that kind of stuff. This is a really meticulously regulated app that is really only wanting real human composers. This may turn out to be the way that classical music is classified and distinct. And take it from me, classical composers really care about legacy in time. So on February 6th, I was still waiting, wondering if it would fail again. And this video script was getting testy. Uh, but on February 7th, I got an email that it was finally released to distributors. And by that evening, this classical album, this 25 song classical album was finally up, up on Apple Music, YouTube Music, Amazon, but it wasn't on Apple Classical. It wasn't on Tidal, Spotify, or Deezer. Deezer is always kind of late to the party. Still, the only thing that I had released that was on Apple Classical was that first piano sonata. February 8th, I confirmed it was on Tidal. On February 9th, I saw it was on Spotify, but still no Apple Classical. I was starting to have a sinking feeling that Apple wasn't going to classify it right. And I kind of looked at the app and and John Eric Copeland as a composer probably fits better as a composer than Master Score Music, which is kind of a is kind of a brand name. And I was afraid that it wasn't going to get in. Finally, on Tuesday, February 13th, 2024, a process that had started in late December of 2023, almost two months later, I called up the Apple Classical app and it was up there. That is the good news. There was also some bad news. The naming was kind of wrong at first. I had followed their rules. You saw the rules that they had on how to put classical names up. I'd followed those, but I didn't put the composer as the artist. Well, that at first looked kind of weird. It was just like the names with no, no composer listed. Eventually, though, uh, I went back to check, and as you can see here, it's organized now by composer, and in the end, almost three months later, the classical album is up on Apple Classical through CD Baby. So if you were waiting for exactly how to get your classical music on Apple Classical, the absolute answer, so far for me, is CD Baby and making sure you use classical under the style and use specific classical subgenres under that. And I wouldn't fool around with any kind of pop as another genre. I'd just keep it classical. Choose two different classical sub-styles as well. I took down a few releases and put them back up, carefully putting them on CD Baby just for Apple stores. And then put them back through DistroKid. But this brings up something that I think I have solved and maybe a new way to release my new classical music. Something through sheer experimentation that I have found. Science. Science. For classical releases, I will be using a new strategy. I put the piece or pieces up with DistroKid 
and CD Baby. And yes, I know that's paying for two different distributors. And you're like, that seems ridiculous. But since I've already paid DistroKid for the year, it's no extra money there. I'm only paying for CD Baby and to get Apple Classical done correctly. And I'm only doing that for classical releases. And there are several benefits to this strategy. Number one, the here now versus hyperfollow issue is solved because I can just use hyperfollow and add in the Apple app once it gets in there. So I don't have to use here now. I can use the hyperfollow app and get the Apple classical or Apple regular Apple link and put it in there. Also, there are a few stores that you will see here that DistroKid doesn't distribute to that I get by using CD Baby. And just an FYI, DistroKid sends a few things that CD Baby doesn't send to. So you're getting in more stores. Plus, if DistroKid ever goes down, or for some reason I don't keep paying, my classical works live on forever on Apple and Apple Classical because CD Baby, you pay for it's a one-time pay. It never gets taken down with their model. And again, my classical legacy is important to me. So for classical music only, at least for now, I think this is the plan I will follow. As you can see here, both Four Days in New York and Hope for Planet C are now both in Apple Classical as well. I released them to DistroKid and these stores, and I released them to CD Baby and these stores. And here they are. You'll know if you're going to get in the classical music app because Apple Music lists your music as classical or classical crossover or some sub genre. So you can see it in the Apple Music app, what it's listing it as. And if it is listing it as classical, most likely you're going to be in the Apple Music classical app as well. So in the end, I have found an answer for best releasing classical music to distributors. Science. 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 I use CD Baby and DistroKid. With CD Baby's model, you are better to release an album rather than a single because it costs the same, but it definitely does get your music to Apple Classical where some other distributors will not, but you do have to classify it correctly in CD Baby. For now, we will have to keep doing this if we want our piece to show up in the classical music app or until DistroKid and Apple play nice together with the classical genre. I have also heard from another contemporary composer Jameson Nathan Jones, who went through this entire process through Symphonic, and indeed his song is up on Apple Classical and did not have any problem with it. So maybe Symphonic now, even though there is some language on their website that says they can't take classical music and get it into Apple, apparently that has changed now. I do have a Symphonic account and I went in there and they do have this subgenre. So maybe now you can get into the Apple Classical app and classical things through Symphonic as well. It would make sense with a name like Symphonic. I just happened to have a video about Symphonic, a review of them, and a video interview with Nathan right here that you can go watch next. I hope you have found this helpful, and we'll see you next time.